about that is uh, some students might want to spend five minutes on a drawing, another student might want to spend one minute, another one who wants to get into heavy illustration might spend an hour. So you have your own time frame, which I didn't even think of, but it ended up working out pretty good. All right, so I'm going to mark these. So we got pose number one, and then we'll cross off till we get to seven. Very cool, very cool. Put on some music in the background too. Lower it a little bit though. Twenty six seconds left. No pressure. It's all good. It's all good. So I try to use Shadia as much as possible. She's like the most versatile uh, model. She's always coming up with these really crazy cool ideas. So um, she's a really great person to work with. All right. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. All righty. Super cool. So that was the first one, that was the first one. So what I can do, I think, let's make you over here, is I can just go frame by frame if I wanted to. Okay, this will be the next pose, slightly different. Her leg is up a little bit more than the last one. This will be another three minute here, start. Okay. Cool. So I did a test, a test uh, class yesterday with my friends and they said, Oh, John, why don't you do some incorporate some gesture, some faster poses. So that was their suggestion. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, so And we're gonna, this is something you guys can do. We're gonna get together with some friends and just watch a movie or a scene from a movie and freeze frame it and draw from it. Like what I do, for those of you who have my class, you know, I'm a, a fanatic about that type of thing, but um, I wanted to do that just with a group of people. Anyone's interested, you can join us. You know, we can totally nerd out with a movie. A friend of mine recommended Predator 2 of all movies, which I've never seen, it's just like, I think she had a, some guilty pleasures we were talking about. So, but yeah, that could be a lot of fun as well. And later on, we actually have um, a split screen, which I did, where you can have the model on one side and a close up on the other. So you can kind of see both at the same time. And that that's actually works out pretty cool too. And the one thing I'm trying to get into more is uh, how to represent the model three-dimensionally. So I'm experimenting with lighting, with like striped stockings, and of course the wide angle lenses and the uh, fisheye lenses. So with those type of things, you can really exaggerate the pose and it kind of offsets the, the fact that we're working from a kind of like a, uh, a still photo. Lower the volume a little bit. There we go. And uh, the one thing uh, about the online situation is for teachers, we can sit in on each other's classes finally. I want to take Marjan's class and Dave's class and Steve's class and Maya's class. 
So it's something we never had time to do. All right, excellent. Pose number two. Pose number two. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna play for it a little bit further this time. Okay, let me play a little forward because the hand got a little blurry. All righty, this will be the next one. This will be the next one. All right. So I wanted to, you know, try some stuff where you're kind of like splashing water on the model and the water is splashing all over, like I said, jumping in the air. We did one where the models were swimming in our pool. Um, I used a GoPro for that. So there's a lot of like cool experiment. They have one, uh, a model, his name is Clay, and he was using nunchucks and doing these, uh, uh, you know, karate moves and stuff like that, which was incredible. So there's a lot of stuff we can do um, when we're dealing with still frame studies, I think. And it's, I think in a way this is more fun to do. You can, any of us can draw from video, but it's more fun when you have a group of people, there's a little bit of a, of a time frame there. And uh, yeah, at the end we get a chance to show each other your drawings. You know, I think it's a little bit more fun. Um, getting artist groups together is so great. You know, if you're, you know, thinking of ways to keep yourself motivated, um, keep, you know, holding yourself accountable. Uh, I've been doing writing sessions with my partner right now, and I don't really feel like writing. I don't want to write, but we're sitting there. It's like, all right, you know, next thing you know, two hours go by and we get a lot done. So those type of things. Once you have a group of people together, um, you kind of are pushed to start working. And, uh, you know, this, this actually works out, I think works out pretty good. This is a hard pose. <laughs> oh, yeah, imagine to hold that pose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can just think of the silhouette. Don't really think about too much of the twisty stuff. And uh, you'll be fine. <laughs> good point. <laughs> Yeah, totally. So I think at this point, you know, Shadi was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm allergic to the sun. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? It was like 100 degrees in Los Angeles. So um, you know, I had to like have her pose and run into the shade every few minutes. And it's that way for those of you interested in doing live action filmmaking, you know, expect the unexpected. She was a trooper and she survived. Um, but yeah, you never know. You never know. We did a night shoot where both of us were covered with mosquitoes. I'm like, yeah, all right. It's all good. All right. We got good. Done with number two. All right, I'm sure number three is going to even be harder. <laughs> Let's see. Now this is, uh, and I was talking right here, you can see how the back has a really strong angle there. So I was adding some arrows. So this is something I do uh, with teaching is that I can uh, draw on the frame. Yeah, yeah. How about that one? That's great. I know the top part of her body is cut off, but I still think it's a nice pose. Now, again, later, like if you're in class, you can choose, you know, so that's going to be really cool. If you have, um, if let's say we have a 10 minute video and there's 30 seconds per frame, that's how many poses you can get out of a certain video. So each student is going to be choosing a different angle, you know? So it works out pretty good. Um, I know we were, we were filming and I, we were filming for like an hour and I'm thinking to myself, I just, I just filmed 5 billion poses, you know? And also another thing is the model doesn't have to stay still ever. 
you know? So a lot of poses that she did, I never actually saw her do on stage because it, it would be physically too difficult to hold, you know? So there are some, some advantages. I'm sure someday, hopefully soon, we'll, we'll all put on 3D goggles and I'll be shooting in 3D, you know? And then we'll, then, you know, we'll have this whole thing kind of uh, conquered, you know? I'm sure it's right around the corner, actually. So we shall see. Now there are some uh, situations where you want you you want to block in the shadow and color those in. That's totally fine. You know, it's kind of up to you how you want to go about it. Usually in my class, as you guys know, a lot of you have taken my class, but I'll show art first. I'll show like an illustrator that I'm really inspired by, or a fine artist, or something like that, or Kim Jong Gi, who I show all the time. But um, that kind of sets the mood for the the drawing session. I didn't want to get too crazy today, but I figure what I'll do is I might do a split screen and then have one side the art that you can or cannot look at. You can look at if you want, and then the model on the other side. You know, so you're always thinking about new artistic styles to to be inspired by. You know, um, I usually try to coax my students into trying a new style at least twice a month. You know, it, it, you have like an art that, a piece of art that you really like and just give it a try. If you're kind of confused about what they're doing, you can just copy it. Copy the art verbatim, then you can throw away the copy, but you kind of step into another artist's shoes for, for an hour or so. And it's, it's incredibly um, valuable for learning, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm always talking about the inspirational binder and, uh, you know, having, having that in front of you so you can be inspired. And I think whenever you're trying something new, I think that's what kind of stimulates the brain. And next thing you know, you're, you're off and running again. All right, three more seconds. Two, one. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right, we're gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna try to just push through with this session, you know, without taking any breaks. But if, of course, if you guys wanna take a break, you know, there's a, I can't stop me anyway. Let's see where she's going next. So it's really cool just kind of watching our character kind of slink around. This is at half speed. Okay, this will be the next one. I know it's a little bit blurred, but I think it's a really nice, a nice pose here. So this one kind of, we're, we're moving forward a little bit, but that's okay. All right, three minutes, three minutes. So if we were to get into some like illustration styles, you know, this pose could easily be an hour. You know, it depends on what, what type of work you're, we're looking at, we're thinking about, you know, so we don't have to torture our model to have her, have her stand in this half pose for, for too long. It works great for painting too. You never know, let's say you're working in a figure drawing session, all of a sudden you have one drawing that you just really get into and it started off as a five minute pose and ended up as an hour long illustration. You know, why not? Why not? Uh, the one good thing about, one of the good things about working digitally is you can color it right away. You can turn it into a poster just by hitting the flat colors, you know? So I was thinking a lot about that. That was something we could never do in my illustration class. I always had a, a dream or a fantasy that we could, um, 
that we could take all the class and bring everyone to the lab, you know, for an hour, then go back to go back to the the classroom, which is you know impossible. But with this, you have your drawing supplies. You can put your drawing supplies aside. You can pull out Procreate. You can draw directly in TV Paint for those of you who have that, and do a quick little motion study. It's out of control. It's pretty cool. So, and also when you do this kind of like timer thing, it kind of takes the edge off of, oh, I got to do a portfolio piece or whatever. Um, just setting, setting certain time frames. I'm doing this, I'm trying to storyboard my film right now and, and it's pretty daunting. And I said to myself, okay, well stop trying to make everything look perfect and just set a timer and say, okay, I'm gonna pop open TV paint and see how many frames I can get through in 60 minutes, you know? And that takes away a lot of the worry about trying to make things look perfect and just tell the darn story. And then you can always go back and even add illustration styles and stuff to it later. So that, anyway, that's my, that's my plan, you know? So uh, a friend of mine showed me a book on, the storyboards for the Big Lebowski. And, uh, you know, the storyboards are so horrible. I was like, I didn't know how to deal with it. I was like, I can't do those storyboards. I can't draw that way. You know, I can't go that, go down the rabbit hole that far, even though the Cullen brothers are incredible filmmakers. But as a, as a graphic artist, I can't allow myself to do that. So I've got to figure out a shorthand so the storyboards can still look cool, but not, um, not look, like really bad, you know? So, um, and that when I woke up this morning with the idea of using TV paint, I was really excited about that. Also with TV paint, and you guys know, I don't know, cause I'm new to TV paint. If you do a bunch of storyboards and you want to do an animated moment, you just add in-betweens. Next thing you know, your storyboards become animated, you know? Um, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. So my board artist, did these amazing series of storyboards. And I was like, how did you do that? This is incredible. Tell me your secrets. And he said, oh, I did it in TV paint. And I was like, oh, so there you go. Because you can scroll back and forth, scrub back and forth through your storyboards. And it's like you're making a movie on the fly. And I've never done that. I always draw on paper, then scan it in. And it just, it just delays everything like crazy. All right, so we got about 12 seconds left. I made this one just one a hair longer, and we're at 12.30. So I think we'll do one more, beep, beep. we'll do one more three minute, and then we'll go to fives, okay. So she's sitting on top of a big giant green screen. And then I just uh, took the, you know, I turned the color off. But with the green screen, if I wanted to um, add some kind of fantastical element, no problem. Okay, I think this one's fine. I know the, the hand got a little blurry there, but I think this is fine. I'm uh, gonna set this one for three minutes. And then when we go to the five minute section, I'm gonna scrub through the video a little bit further, you know, so it'll be a little, uh, a little bit of a different situation. So, so yeah, I've been, uh, I, I, I mentioned in class, I, mean, I mentioned this several times to my students, I'm addicted to sculpture and addicted to clay. And I finally was able to kick the addiction. <laughs> it's been two months, I haven't touched clay. And uh, I've been just forcing myself to work on my, my screenplay and, and, and my film. And now I feel okay, I, don't, I can walk past clay without you know, <laughs> sweating, you know? Um, but uh, you know, I realized I needed to move on. And I, that's something we have to do sometimes is just say, well, what do you wanna do? Who do, you, who do you wanna be? And I don't really necessarily wanna be known as a sculptor, but, um, but yeah, I, I learned to enjoy uh, script writing. 
You know, this is my third or fourth script I've written, and each one gets harder. I don't know why. It's like you, when you know what's what's going to happen around the corner, it gets worse and worse. And um, but it's uh, it's coming along. It's coming along. So. And with these drawings, even though they're not completely sequential, you could always layer them in Photoshop and have this, you know, uh, kind of like multiple image, like those photos I showed at the beginning. You know, there's, there's just endless things we can do in the computer later on with this stuff. We can turn the model upside down. You know, we can combine two figures together. Um, a lot of the stuff, the more creative stuff that I've done is just by mistake. I'll have several layers open in Photoshop and like, oh, wow, that's, that's kind of cool, you know? And then next thing you know, you're working again, you know? So it works out really, I think, really well. All right, we got about nine, seven seconds left on this. I love my little timer. All right, great. Great, great, great. Okay, so it's about 1230. I think we're making good time. So I'm going to play this a little forward. And uh, you'll see, we'll, we'll go into like a different situation, different configuration. Yeah, see, there you go. So now we can do, that's a great pose right there. Um, I'm going to set this up a little bit longer. Let me get my little thing out of the way for you. Um, let's do six minutes. Okay. I'm already changing my mind. Six minutes. Okay. So the idea is that, that I can zoom in as well. You guys can do this when you videotape your own models or something. Um, we can't walk up to the model. And most of us don't carry binoculars wherever we go. So to have close-ups is a really good thing as well. You know, and I tend to do this, I don't know how to explain it, but I'll zero in in a certain area, and that'll be my like nucleus of the drawing where I focus. And that'll enable me to kind of get into the zone easier. So I'm kind of showing you how my how I would see the models. I would focus on certain areas. I obviously I my focus on the face and the ears, um, and it gives me that entryway into the into the into the drawing. So I might do other videos where I'll zoom in on a toe or something, or a belt buckle, or you know a piece of jewelry or a tattoo, something very specific that gets me focused, you know, like you're focusing a camera lens, you know. So uh, I try to do that. I try to, I always, I walk around the house all the time. I always say focus, you know, but I'm always trying to keep my, uh, keep my mind focused. And that's a really helpful way to do it. And even this, I forgot, I turned the camera to the side. So it looks like, you know, it looks like if we put a shadow below her, like way below her, it looked like she's jumping in the air, which is pretty neat. And we can also take away, you know, if we wanted to have certain areas in shadow, this is a bright sunny day, but we also shot stuff in the middle of the night. And you turn one light off and you've got all the dark shadows that you can work with. Uh, as well, so it's it's been pretty exciting, I must say, so far. And this is one thing I always say when it comes. This is what I believe is, for us artists, we're only as good as the models we work with, you know. And I think we have these amazing models here in Los Angeles, especially that. 
I'm very grateful. You know, I see a lot of the, the gesture that I have in my work and I think back of Sarah Streeter and uh, the models that we've drawn over the years. And uh, I really, you know, I really appreciate that. Um, there is a lot of, there's like Croquis Cafe or something. There's, there are model resources that you can draw from, which is really awesome. But I felt that they weren't, they weren't my style. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I want twisted figures and, you know, strange poses and things like that. And when you start messing with other mediums like photography and stuff like that, you're going to start finding your own, I hate to use the word style, but your own eye. And everything that you do has to fit that one iris, you know, the, the clothes you wear, the paintings you do, the storyboards, the films, everything is kind of in that one, that one zone. And I realized that the modeling sessions around town, although they are inspiring, they're not part of my lens. So I need to just keep shooting and filming my own, um, my own models, you know. And uh, that's nothing wrong with that. It's just, there's something interesting about that. Because if I was drawing from Croquis Cafe, I would still bring in my own art references and I would tweak it to kind of make it towards my own thing for sure. But it's easier when I already can kind of, you know, direct the model a little bit, you know. Same with you guys, you're working on your film, you're gonna be directing your, your voice actors, you know. It's, it's that whole thing of, of um, directing the eye, I guess, or directing the style of the eye. That was another reason why I had to buy the wide angle lens. Like the lens I had wasn't wide enough. I had to get like fisheye lens and Terry Gilliam style stuff. So anyway. And I think what we'll do too, we'll stop probably maybe 10 minutes or seven minutes before so if any of you guys have any, I don't know, well, let's do 10 minutes. And then if you guys want to show your work, have any comments or, or whatever, I, I don't, I can't really see the chat line, but I'll definitely check to see if there's any, any messages in the, on the chat. So, so I got about 45 seconds left. Now I time my life this way. <laughs> I time how long it takes to do the dishes, how long it takes to sweep the floor, how long it takes to do a shower. And once I started to reduce that time, I was able to open up more time to work on my, my projects, you know? So I, I always kind of, kind of carry a timer around. And it makes it kind of fun, see if you can beat the clock, if I can do all the laundry in uh, seven minutes instead of 12 minutes, you know? Um, but it, it just kind of keeps, keeps the momentum going. So a lot of times we have to kind of, nowadays we have to kind of create our own momentum, if that makes any sense, so. I know I'm a weirdo. All right, great, excellent. Very cool, very cool. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play forward. And if any of you guys wanna keep working on one drawing while I move to the second drawing, that's totally fine too. All right, how about this one? Something a little different. All right, I'm gonna do again six minutes. And I know again, her hands are a little blurry, so you have to kind of use your um, imagination. Um, what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to you know study more about photography and shutter speed and see if I can get everything super sharp, you know, so there won't be any motion blur. I'm learning, you know, that's why I don't teach photography class. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning, I'm learning as we go, so it's all good. This is pretty damn great. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you.
And uh, one of the one of the most um, helpful things. Let me see if I have it. I have these little skulls that I buy. I have it in front of me, but but I'll have like a, a little human skull. And what I'll do once I draw, let's say the head in a certain position. Let me grab. I'll grab a big skull. I have little baby skulls, but is that I'll also put, see if I can put this right. I'll also put the, the skull in the position that her head is in. I'll draw the skull as well. And that has helped out a lot. And if you guys know my work, you know that my work is kind of flat. It's not as dimensional as it could be. But looking at the human skull uh, was super helpful. And I found, I bought these skulls on eBay. They're only like 10 bucks and they're super accurate. And the idea is when you're holding the little skull in your hand, let's say we're looking at Shadia's face, but you're imagining what's happening at the back of the skull. You're imagining the whole thing. And you're kind of, you can incorporate the element of touch. You can feel the skull, you know, and it's so incredibly helpful. It's, it's got, it's, made all of my drawing more dimensional, not just heads. Um, so I would recommend that if you just look up an anatomy skulls, um, they're from China. I bought one and I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And I bought 30 more. What am I gonna do with them? I don't know. But um, I was planning on you know, passing them out in class and stuff like that. But I learned that from, I'm gonna turn the, Turn the music down a little bit. I learned that from my my hero, uh, Kim Jung Gi, um, and I took several of his classes. And what he did when he was younger, uh, in high school or even grade school, is he would always draw the skeleton first. So he would draw his his classmates. He would draw the skeleton, then he would draw the the figure on top of that, and then clothes on top of that. And he did that for the first, you know, maybe five or six years of his life. And now when you see him draw, it feels like he's tracing a real person. And it's like magical. People watch him and like, oh my God, you know. But I think it's, it's that uh, memory, almost like sense memory of what's going on underneath. So if any of you ever have difficulty drawing faces or eyes or whatever, it's, ne it's never the face, it's always the skull. So once you uh, start practicing that, um, I was, I remember it was like, I don't know, maybe two years ago, I did some drawings. I remember thinking, John, you're teaching at CalArts. You should draw a heck of a lot better than this. You know, and I, was, I was really coming down on myself. And I, and I went back and I looked at the Kim jong videos again, and, and I picked up the skull and started practicing. And I was like, in a matter of five minutes, my drawings got so much better. And uh, I was like, oh my God, the Eureka, you know. Um, but it's that idea of structure, you know, not necessarily a ball or anything like that, but an actual skull. So when we do an animal drawing, I have animal drawing classes or I do animal sculptures. I always have the students, you know, really figure out the skeleton of the cat or whatever before you even get out of the gate, you know. And once you figure that structure out, then a lot of those other problems that come up, like the back legs don't look right or whatever, it's just because you haven't figured out the inside, you know? And you figure out these pieces step by step. Now I'm getting excited. <laughs> but you figure out these pieces step by step and it makes everything so much easier, you know? It's like drawing doesn't have to be difficult, you know? As long as you kind of break it down step by step, so. Anyway, things I've been, I've been discovering you now. So uh, what I've done too is I actually videotape the skull like turning in slow motion. So maybe sometime I, in the side view, I can have the skull turning. But again, it's more important to have it in your hands though, rather than just looking at it as a flat picture. So that's important. So again, this is another thing too. A lot of us are doing this kind of online drawing, which is, which is this, the, what we can do at this particular time, but try to do real life drawing as much as possible too. Even if it's just drawing your own hand or drawing yourself in the mirror, 
you know, so you're still keeping up with, with the life drawing as well. Okay. All right, great, very good. All right, so I'm gonna, I think we have time for maybe one, one and a half. So I wanna move forward a little bit because she has some really cool poses. Let me just see what we have. Let me go back here. Look at that, that's crazy. Okay, this will be the next one. So this one, I talk about this a lot, you know, in, in relation to storyboards, but here is our point of view, right? So this is what's closest to us. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the, the, her shoulder is what's closest to us. And then what's going back is her hands and also what's going back is her feet. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start drawing what's closest to me first and then work my way backwards, you know? And what happens is you can improvise, you can even exaggerate that more, you know? So um, a lot of times, because of the way we recognize people, oops, let me start the timer. We recognize people, we like, we wanna draw their face first. Hey, Shadi, how are you doing? You know, you don't look at someone's shoulder like, hey, you know, you know, it's like, but as an artist, it's like seeing things differently, you know? And not drawing the face, not drawing the head first every single time, it starts to get into that. Again, if we're, as a filmmaker, or as, a, you know, when we go to the movies, we might be looking at, oh, look at that amazing negative shape in that shot. You know, if you freeze frame it on DVD. The average moviegoer doesn't see that. They appreciate it subconsciously, but they, they shouldn't see it. But for us, that's, we live and breathe that type of stuff. So kind of embracing uh, the artist way, I guess, is, um, is, is something to really keep in mind, you know. Um, once I get into, I'm gonna, you know, I might just start posting it just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, but posting some of these fisheye lens shots. You know, I did one of my cat recently. She looked like she was Godzilla size, you know, <laughs> literally. She's like the size of a bus. Um, her, her butt was gigantic and her head was way down the road, you know, literally um, with, this, with this, uh, this fisheye lens. And that maybe that's exaggerated too much. But the idea of, well, how do we have our work more three-dimensional? How do we have it coming off the page? For certain, cir certain circumstances, you might want to have a romantic scene where you want the image to be flat. And that's fine, too. But, but being able to kind of control uh, how much space you have in a, in a scene is, is so important. And that, that's something I've been battling with ever since I first started drawing is how do I make my stuff more three-dimensional? Eventually, I just gave up and switched to ZBrush. <laughs> so everything is like totally 3D and ZBrush. But, but I do think this, this conversation is, um, you know, is something good to have. And you know, even talking about it with your, with your friends about, well, how do we make stuff look more 3D? And you know, all that type of stuff is just really great. So cool stuff, cool stuff. So I got about three minutes left of this one. So I think what we'll do after this, we'll do one more short one. That'll take us right to, to 12, 1250. Then we can open it up, chat a little bit, maybe see a couple of drawings. If any of you is working traditionally, you can hold up your drawing to the screen. So it'd be cool. And, uh, you know, talking about the skull, I was always afraid of anatomy as a kid, not a kid, but in college, uh, because the friends that I know had gotten heavily into anatomy their work got really stiff and it made me scared of anatomy. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna learn anatomy. I think that was a really bad choice on my part because I think that you can do dynamic flowing anatomy 
uh, as well. It's just how you approach it, you know? Um, so I've been getting more into that, into my classes and, and talking about the, the amazing rib cage and pelvis that we have inside there and the amazing machine that pushes us forward and, you know, all that, all that type of stuff. And it's, it's been making my work better, but also richer. Yeah, you know, when you're drawing, figure drawing for 20 years, how do you make it fresh? What, what do you look for? It's like, well, you start looking inside the body, you realize, oh my God, there's so much more going on. You know, it's, it's really, really exciting. So I feel, I've said this before, I'll say it again, but I feel more excited now than I did ever. You know, there's just so much, so much to play with, so much going on. It's pretty cool, you know. And also another thing about what we're doing, us right now online, you know, this little session, so much work. All of my friends who work in the animation studios are working at home. And if you can learn how to communicate and show your work online, you can actually um, work, on, work with studios in Australia. You can work, I'll tell you a secret, don't tell anybody, but a close friend of mine, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, was working two storyboard jobs at the same time. He had two monitors, and he was getting double paid, working himself to death. But uh, this, both studios didn't find out. So, and this was someone who was desperate trying to find work before. Now he's doing, he's like a DJ. Doing, I was like, I, I'm not going to say his name, but I was like, man, you could do three jobs at once. Um, so... I know for myself as a filmmaker, I'm gonna to need to communicate with effects people from, you know, maybe New Zealand if I can get Weta involved, but being able to communicate back and forth is, is gonna be something that is gonna be really valuable, you know. I'm just right now, I'm getting over my fear of Zoom. All right, very cool. All righty, great. So actually, oops, shut it. That brought us to to uh, 1250. I think we can we can stop here. And I don't know if you guys have any. Let me just. I'm going to stop my screen share. Stop my screen share. I was kind of keeping an eye on the time because oh look all these no all these messages. Oh my god, I'm scared. Um, there is. Uh, I knew that the time was going to go by quick, so I was like keeping my eye on the uh, on the um, timer here. Oh, good, we got some good comments. Someone said, "I hate you, Mahoney." Who said that? Oh, my. Uh, Dave LeBeau, man. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, if any of you want to, what want to show? I'm just kidding, Dave. <laughs> just picking on. Um, if any of you want to show your your work. I'm looking at all of the thumbnails now. These are great. I'm looking at all of the nice, nice. These are great. I'm looking at everyone's everyone's work. Marjan, beautiful. Absolutely. 